You're listening to Body IO FM with your hosts, Kiefer and Dr. Rocky, where cutting edge science meets the razor's edge of health and performance. Welcome to another episode of Body IO FM with your host, Kiefer, and absent co host, Dr. Rocky Patel. He couldn't make it this morning. So. I want to, uh, as always, mention the sponsors, High Lead Athletic Wear, and of course, you know, everything that happens here is supported by uh, sales of my e-material, that's Carbnite, at Carbnite.com, Carbackloading, Carbackloading.com, uh, Transforming Recipes, also the .com, uh, there's also a dessert book there, so check all that stuff out, uh, you know, regardless, tons of free information for you guys, and I hope to be able to keep providing that. Uh, On today's show, you know, things are a little different. We've been focused, actually, we've been focused all over the map this year. We've gone through performance and paleo and food allergies, um, you know, you name it, psychology, self-image. Today, we're we're getting a little bit back to the roots of the old school site. Um, We're going to talk about, you know, serious training and hypertrophy uh, you know, where I started in all this, basically. And, you know, luckily we've got Ben Pikulski on on the call. So, Ben, thanks for thanks for getting on the, the show, especially. Well, I guess it's not as early where you are as it is where I am. Yeah, man, it's a pleasure. And uh, I'm just let you know I'm a big fan. I've been following your stuff for a while. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely an honor for me to join you on your podcast. Yeah, and I'm glad to have you on. I saw your MI40 program which you've upgraded, you know, I saw the original, was that almost, feels like almost two years ago now? Longer, actually, 2011, so it's almost three now. Well, I, I think I saw it in 2012 was the first time I was introduced to it, and yep. we hopped on the phone, and, you know, I checked it out, and like the vi- just the video, instru- even if people didn't like the training program, the video instructional guides were phenomenal, I thought, in that. You did such a good job of breaking down movements, Thank um, you. yeah, it, it, it's one of the better video series I've seen before for that. Uh, that's, that's one of the things that I, that I really take pride in. Right. I mean, obviously, um, you know, the thing that I kind of say to everybody is it's never about what you do, it's how you do it. And if you don't know how to execute a movement, you really just kind of spin your wheels. So I really took a lot of time and, uh, you know, optimize my uh, understanding of biomechanics and movement and exercise and, um, you know, that's really what started it was, you know, what could you really do for people to change their life really, really quickly as far as changing their physique? And I mean, anyone can write a great workout for you. I, I, you know, if they have an understanding of periodization, if they have an understanding of program design, um, but not very many people from my, ex- from my experience uh, have any idea how to execute movement properly. Like biomechanics is, it seems like the impossible dream, especially for personal trainers, for really everybody. Um, so um, gratefully, you know, my MI40 programs have done exceptionally well just based around that. And I tell people the same thing. I'm like, listen, the programs are great. They're very hard and, and, and that's intentional. I want you to get outside your comfort zone. But if anything at all, the tremendous amount of value is learning how to move, um, especially for people who are looking to bring up weak body parts. Yeah. And what's your, you know, we've been on the phone before, so we, we've talked about your background a little bit, but can you tell the audience that, I mean, you, you actually have some background in, uh, biomechanics and that? Yeah, I studied kinesiology and biomechanics in university. I went to university in Canada at the University of Western Ontario. And uh, I mean, as you know, John, I mean, what you learn in school is one thing, but most of my my best education has come after school. I mean, I've become a student of the game and, uh, you know, someone who competes against the best physiques in the world. And I don't believe that I have the best genetics in the world. So I need to learn how to compete with these guys, man. Like I just don't build muscle the way they do. Uh, you know, I just I just don't have the genetics. I just can't do it. I just can't go in there and sling weights. So I had to figure out, you know, the most biomechanical, scientifically optimal way um, possible. And my scientific brain, I'm sure much like yours, believes there's, you know, a continuum of right to wrong. And there has to be some type of degree of most optimal, you know. Um, so I've just, I started on a quest to find the best way to exercise when I was about 16 or 17 years old. And um, you know, what I learned in school was awesome, but really that was just kind of laying the ground, the front, the framework and the groundwork for um, what was to come after that. And there's been so many courses and so many internships and so much education 
that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to understand movement more and more each day. And obviously I'm becoming better at it, but there's still it's the type of thing. It's, you know, the more you learn, the less, you know, kind of situation, right? The more you realize, holy geez, there's so much to learn. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's the rabbit hole scenario. You know, you, yeah. you think, oh, you know, it's, <clears throat> and I, and I do this all the time, you know, something catches my attention, very interesting. Um, and then, and these are even kind of minutiae in comparison. And I'll, all of a sudden I realize I've just spent five or six hours exploring this one minor topic. Uh, so then when you scale back and you start talking about exercise and movement and um, even assembling decent programs, you know, you said anybody could make a good program. And I would agree with that. You know, you could make a pretty – you could go to anybody and get a pretty decent program. But Decent, right. Yeah. But to go to the people who not only have that book experience, but the real world experience is a whole different playing field. I mean, the the difference between somebody who just tries to rely on r the research and somebody who has done it, you know, had trained people, trained themselves, seen all kinds of different athletes. It's it's a totally different world. Yeah, man. I think that's why people tend to migrate to me is not only am I talking the talk, but I'm walking the walk. And, and for, truthfully, from my experience, man, I mean, I've had some guys with the best book education in the world write pro programs for me and they suck. You know, science <laughs> is one thing, but it's, and that's the honest truth, man. You can get the people with, you know, the best education, the best theoretical education in the world. And they really have no idea because they've never really, um, you know, put the pedal to the metal, of, you know, and actually applied some stuff. And the guys who have written the best workouts for me are the application guys. I mean, there's a guy named Nick Mitchell out of uh, the UK. Oh, he's kind of worldwide now. Uh, you know, Charles Glass. These guys who don't have the biggest theoretical knowledge. Nick's mm -hmm. actually become – he's pretty good theoretically. But um, the guys who just have competed before or who, who have tried to build an appreciable amount of muscle, just understand what it takes. You know, I've had guys design workouts for me and I look at it and I'm like, well, where's the rest? You know, or, or where's where, you know, where's the other half? And uh, it's just never uh, adequate or the exercise selection isn't right or the, um, you know, the periodization isn't right or the amount of volume isn't right. People just don't get it until you just get your hands dirty. So I think that's why people have taken a, have taken a liking to me is because not only am I studying the science, but I'm also the guy trying to figure out how to apply it in, in practice. So, Right. Two sides of the same coin. Most of the time people ignore that. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. There's... There's somebody on the internet now who's, you know, trying to get kind of a, an athlete's following, but he's not an athlete, never worked with anybody. The only thing he's ever worked with are mice. And he's just trying to convince <laughs> everybody that he's, you know, he knows exactly how to make a diet and exercise, you know, programs for people to, you know, for hypertrophy or performance. I'm like, man, dude, how, you have no idea how far off base you are. Like, you know, the, the difference between actually seeing what happens when you apply this stuff to people and what comes up in some of the research, even some of the human research, it's, it's radically different. So that was, that was one thing that, you know, I, I my audience knows I don't, you, I don't promote almost anything. Uh, and for me to even promote your program, like says a lot. And I was really impressed when we talked about, and, and basically this, you know, you've got the, the scientific background, but that's not what you rely on for all of your material. And when I saw the videos, I was, I was like, man, this stuff is awesome. Thanks. Yeah. And it's, it's to, to kind of men or to talk to what you're saying there about people trying to take the theory and apply it. I actually had a, an interesting experience this weekend where there was a nutritionist guy who's very much theoretical and he's very intelligent, trying to tell a guy what to do for the last week before a contest. And he was literally writing out, you know, hour for hour, what you should do with your water and your <laughs> sodium and your, and your carbs and, uh, and I was like, man, I, I walked in the, like halfway through the conversation. And I was like, whoa, 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 hang on a minute here. How the heck? And he hadn't done his diet up to that point. So it's he's, the guy's about seven weeks from a contest or seven days from a contest. And he's mm -hmm. and this nutritionist guy is trying to tell him, hey, this is what you should do. And I was like, what? Like, how are you going to try to speculate based on some remote scientific evidence that you think you you know what this guy should be doing for the next week? Nutrition is so um, you know it's so hands on. There's so many factors, and you know all these armchair um, experts think that, Hey, I can you know read a study and apply it to someone based on what's theoretically true. And there's so many variables, man. Like that's why I appreciate what you're doing is, is you're giving people, uh, knowledge, you're giving people tools. And that's the way I teach nutrition, man, is like, I'm not going to tell you what you should eat and when I'm going to give you the tools to make your own decisions. And that's, 
you know, I'll tell the story briefly about how I came across you. And, you know, similar to I I was traveling um, in Australia doing camps and I was telling people what nutrition protocol I was following. And I go, you know, I I eat most of my carbs late in the day. And, you know, early in the day is, is, you know, a little bit of uh, higher proteins, higher fats. And for the most part, I save my carbs for after the workout or before bed. And somebody goes, oh, that's called carb backloading. And I go, what the hell is carb backloading? It's just what I instinctively learned how to do. And mm-hmm. you learn that, man, is like the people who tend to be more, I guess the cream rises to the top kind of thing. The people who are more, um, you know, more um, intelligent, more applied, it seems as though there's less inconsistencies as far as the application mm-hmm. go. Uh, you know, everyone seems to kind of have the same, not not in general, but for the most part, a lot of people have, um, you know, the same beliefs and the same understanding when it comes to nutrition. And that's how I came across your stuff. So someone said it's called carb backloading. It's by this guy, Kiefer. You should check it out. So, you know, I went and read your book and there's obviously some slight differences with what I did compared to what you do because of extreme situations. Obviously, I'm trying to build as much muscle as possible. Uh, so you can't always do the extreme carb backloading, but uh, such a massive appreciation for the book that you put out, man. So huge respect and thank you. Yeah. When we talked about that first, First time I just started laughing because uh, you're like, what, what are you talking about? What is this car backloading? And <laughs> <What? Yeah. laughs> right. And it's funny yeah. because I, you know, I've talked to uh, quite a few higher level people, you know, who not only do training for other people, but you know, they, they're very serious athletes as well, or professional athletes. And a lot of them are like, you know, it, it's really interesting because that's just kind of how I eat. That's how I figured out how to eat. And, you know, if, if you're willing to experiment and not just listen to what everybody says, you're, you're probably going to find some of these scenarios that work way better for you than what, you know, like the guy trying to pinpoint somebody's hourly diet going up to a show is ever going to provide. Uh, and, and I, and I think that's, that's a great example of, you know, one thing that's, you know, one thing I've noticed, and I'm sure you've noticed in the the bodybuilding world, uh, figure world, fitness world, uh, especially at the, you know, the amateur level is everybody's, you know, they're, they're the top coach. They promote themselves as a top coach. They've got this special program. And then when you see everybody's diet, everybody's diet is exactly the same. You know, right. there, there's almost no change at all. And, you know, I think that's one reason I had some popularity there when I was working in that field was because no, no two diets I ever made for somebody were the same, especially coming up to the show. And you, you nail that on the head. When you take somebody's body to that kind of extreme, there is no way you're going to find a single template or even be able to predict without having worked with that person a couple times exactly what you should do. There's the flip side of that that says, you know, I, I t- this is the quote I use all the time is like, you can get a chimpanzee in shape using chicken and broccoli every meal, right? Like any idiot right. can get you in shape doing that. It doesn't mean it's going to be anywhere near optimal. You know? Yeah, right. And that's why your your intelligent brain looks for the, the scenarios to make people better as opposed to just however possible get them in shape. And that seems to be the consistency in our industry now is like any idiot who's ever competed and had sem- some semblance of success with getting themselves lean is now an authority – and right. puts everyone on chicken and chicken and broccoli. Can I eat turkey? No. Can I eat beef? No. Can you eat egg whites? No. Just chicken, just broccoli. That's it. And literally, you can get a- an ape in you know under four percent body fat if you give them two hours of cardio a day and no food, like zero calories. Right. Um, but that's not what we're after. You know, we're after trying to p- make people better and make people better athletes and make them work harder and perform and, and be optimal. And you know, that, that's why you have such a great following, man. Is you're teaching people how to chase their optimal self and not just get in shape and then you'd be partially suicidal and, and uh, you know, eating junk food for weeks afterwards. Right. Right. Yeah. They just have the, the junk food one night and then they're good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, it's often though, right? as opposed to, you know, just the massive cravings where, I mean, I knew a girl who put 40 pounds on in 12 days after a contest because she was so depleted eating just chicken and broccoli. And that's literal. Um, and 40 pounds in 10 days. And I was like, Oh, tell it 10 or 12 days, whatever it was. And like, how do you do that to someone, man? Like I, as a coach, I'd, be, I'd feel so guilty because obviously it's your fault. Right. Like for, for changing their relationship with food, you know, it's crazy. I just, a uh, question, I, I'm, I assume, do you ever help people construct diets for their shows or? Yeah, I do, man. Like, um, okay. I try, I try to help as few people as possible. The reason I, I, I don't take on a massive amount is uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm very hard on myself and I'm very committed. 
And if you're not as committed as me, I'm take you on. And yeah. because I end up wanting it more than you do. Um, so I have this like massive selection process where I'm very selective with the people I take on. And because I just, I can't deal with people who aren't committed and nothing against them. It's just like, I'm very committed and like, I can't take on someone who's less committed than me. So it sounds kind of silly and arrogant, but uh, it's just the way my brain works, man, is if I'm going to be more committed to a goal than you are, then I don't want to work with you. So I'm very selective with who I take on, man. So I haven't become like a mainstream nutritional counselor by any stretch and not though I ever claim to be that, but um, yeah, I have a really hard time working with people who are flighty or, or uncommitted and, you know, not saying that everyone should be as committed as me, but that's why I'm just very selective with, you know, what your specific goals are and um, we need to be kind of on the same page as far as degree of commitment. Oh, I, I totally understand. I wasn't trying to, uh, I, I'd even think about that before I asked it because I, I'm not trying to get anybody on the show to contact you for <laughs> nutrition coaching. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, um, I do take on clients. But it, like I yeah. say, only the most committed. And, and if I tell right. you to do something and I, I'm all for you asking questions, like I'm all for you saying, hey, well, why are we doing this? And usually I'll write a document as to, hey, we're changing this and this is why. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if, if I have someone who's, oh, you know, I decided I didn't want to eat this today. I wanted to try this or I decided I wasn't able to do that. And like, uh, you know, I just I don't know, man, I, I'm kind of tired of having to deal with people who um, you know, only do it. Uh, I, I, I don't know, man, it sounds silly and arrogant, but like, I just, uh, I'd rather deal with people who are massively committed and, uh, that's the only demographic I choose to deal with. Well, I don't, you know, I, I don't think it's, you know, arrogant by any stretch of the imagination. I think as a coach who is dedicated to the results of the people you work with, I mean, that's what you have to expect. You don't want to coach somebody who's setting you up for failure as a coach, just like, you wouldn't take somebody on and set them up for failure. You know, it, it's a two-way yeah. relationship there. So I don't think there's any arrogance whatsoever. I, you know, I think it's the intelligent. I almost take it personally when someone's, you know, like they become family, they become friends. And, you know, I want to talk to them as much as possible. I want to know what they did for the workout today, how it went, why it didn't go well. If it did go well, let's figure out why. If it didn't go well, let's make it better. You know, what did you, what did you train today? Let's figure out the optimal nutrition post-workout. Let's figure out why you're not sleeping well. Like it becomes very, very intricate. And that's just the way my brain works, man. I want it to be detail oriented. I want it to be uh, great. And, you know, it, it's, it's a, lo a lot of work for me. So another reason I don't take a lot of people, but it's a lot of work for most people. So um, I'm just trying to make people uh, their best selves and not everybody's striving for that. So, yeah, no, I hundred percent there with you. I was, I actually only originally asked the question because when we were talking about that post uh, post-contest bloat that a lot of people go through, especially women in particular, seem to be the most susceptible to that. Uh, that's why I started having like a four-week post-show uh, diet period for them so that they had some guidance after the show in case there were any issues. You know, usually when I put somebody on stage, they were not nearly as metabolically deranged as most athletes. But you know, I still wanted to provide them with a roadmap to get to whatever their next goal was, at least for the next four weeks. Um, and I was wondering if you ever found that or, you know, if you've provided them enough information, at least during that coaching process where, you know, they understand what to do when they get off stage. I know most coaches totally ignore that. They get you on stage, they're done. Um, and, and I feel that's a crime in itself. Every client I take on, I insist on taking on for for a minimum of six months because I really believe in order to nice. like my biggest benefit to people is like I'm going to change your body, not just with nutrition, but I'm going to teach you how to move. I'm going to teach you how to optimize weak body parts, bring up weak body parts, uh, optimize your training. And that's that's a time intensive thing. So I like to train people for five months leading into a contest and a month after always. So nice. you know, I believe it's going to take us at least you know, eight to 12 weeks to make any semblance of change in your physique short term. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we need a good amount of time to get you ready for the contest. So like taking on someone 12 weeks for a contest, I just don't do it anymore, man. Because like I say, any chimpanzee, you can get any chimpanzee in shape by just diving you know, killing them for 12 or 16 weeks. But that's not what I'm about, man. I mean, you can hire another trainer for that, hire another coach, but if you want to get better, that that's kind of what I try to do. You know, it's like, I'll teach you how to bring this body part up. I'll, I'll try to fix your sleep. I'll try to improve your, the way your body's functioning, help you with detoxing. I'm just making sure everything's kind of working optimally and your body's working together as a whole. And that takes time, man. There's, there's always going to be that period of, you know, kind of lag time where, you know, we start something and it's going to take some time for it to kick in and to, for it to really work, you know, detoxing estrogens, whatever it may be. 
takes time. So like I say, it's always five months before a contest and then four weeks after. So we make sure um, not only are you sight mentally in a good place, but you're physically in a good place as well. Nice. Nice. So let's shift to, you know, your, your MI40 and, and now, you know, the evolution in my 40 X. Uh, like I said, I've, I've, you know, already told people the, the video series with those are great, you know, and it's not just you demonstrating the movements, which I very much appreciated. You had uh, somebody there, and it, it was actually different from any of the video portions. You had somebody that actually you took through the movement, and then you were there describing everything that was going on, which I've seen a lot of these videos where it's the person describing while they're doing the movement themselves. And, you, you know, right. you just – there's only so much you can get from that. So so let's talk so, about MI40X because I'm even slightly yeah, man, ignorant. So 2011, I put out uh, MI40, and that was you know number one bestseller on the internet as far as muscle building programs. It did very well, has a great following, and then everyone's like, oh, uh, you know, you know the question, man. Well, what do I do next? And uh, right. so imagine how you know how much you've learned over the last three years, and I believe I've learned quite a lot, quite a bit over the last three years. So um, you know, MI40X, which is I put it out this June, uh, is basically the, the accumulation of all the knowledge that I've gained over the last three years and putting it into a very well periodized, um, a well-designed program and way more detail and way more um, videos as far as execution, body parts, uh, specialization. Uh, I even get into, you know, I, what I believe is the most important thing when you're exercising is what you're thinking about when you're training. You know, where is your intent? Where is your, your physical or your mental intent? Um, like that's extremely important. So I'm getting into the intricacies of exercise, um, you know, what I've termed the six essentials of exercise, which is basically like, you know, what are the main things you must be doing during your, um, during every set, during every workout, um, how to optimize those, how to bring up weak body parts, and then, you know, getting into the psychology of um, where is your thought process while you're doing this so that you're making sure that you're putting your intent in the right place. You're making sure your, your body part is responding the way you want it to it's moving the way you want it to and uh, the results have been tremendous man and i'm so excited for what comes in the future i was at um, the arnold in spain last week and uh, it sounds arrogant but like every person every every fit person was like hey man you know i've done your program and i loved it and it seemed like all the best physique were coming up to me and i was like it was almost surreal <laughs> for me because you know i mean i I just see myself as a normal person. I mean, a lot of people, you know, think I'm a pro bodybuilder or what, you know, I'm some celebrity or whatever. I'm just a normal person, man. So when someone comes up to me and says, Ben, you know, I appreciate you changing my life. You really changed my life and my physique or it still hits home, man. You still appreciate that so much. So to go to a place like Spain, you know, a different part of the world from where I live and for, you know, 40 to 50 percent of the people coming up saying, hey, man, you know, I did your program and it changed my life is it's, it's pretty impactful for me. So I'm really appreciative for that. That's awesome. Yeah, that I felt that myself. You know, you you get that, and you're in those scenarios. And it, at least for me, I same thing. I just you know, I'm just some guy putting out good information, helping people along the way. You know, I've worked with some people, and and to get that kind of feedback is always surreal for me as well. It's like, well, you know, that's that that's fantastic that I've touched so many people, and I you know, I don't know exactly what my original intent had ever been with putting out this material. So when, when you were, and that brings us to a good topic, you know, what, why did you, you know, what made you put this out there besides, you know, just in general, a lack of, of anything like this? Like why, what made you stand up and be like, look, you know, we, we need to have a better resource for people, you know, out there, not only in their programming, but also, you know, the exercise movement, selection you know what 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 got you dissatisfied enough that you're like okay i gotta put this out there well the first one in 2011 uh literally i had no idea this this world even existed i mean i, I had never put out a youtube video before i don't think and uh <laughs> i was i was hired by a client um who is um, you may or may not know vince del monte and uh yeah he hired me we actually went to school together in university knew each other a little bit but not really well um, he hired me to, to prep him for um, a couple of uh, men's physique shows, and he ended up winning his uh, WBFF Pro Card. Went to the World Championships, did relatively well, and uh, he's like, "Man, you know, this is so different and so unique. 
you have to take this to the world. Like you have to share what you have. You have such a gift. And I was like, well, whatever, man. And the truth is I was just um, about to have my first baby. My girl was just about to have her first baby. So I was like, well, man, I'll tell you what, passive income sounds awesome. Let's try it. And uh, so I put this program out in my 40 and it was basically just Vince asked me, well, what are the five things? Like if you could take, if you could look across every gym you've ever been to in the world, what are the five things that you could teach people that would make the biggest impact in the shortest amount of time? So and I went through the five simple things that I thought everyone needed to change. And within, you know, six months, essentially, my 40 became a bestseller. And it was so basic for me, what I taught in that program, like it was so simple that I was like, well, man, imagine if I could, you know, kind of make that the base level where people start and then teach them, you know, what's what's next. Like if you want to, okay, now you've done this program. Well, now well, what do I do next or how can I take my physique to a whole new level? And that's what stimulated MI40X is just the knowing that in MI40, which was such a massive hit, I just started to scratch the surface, man. Like I just started to give just a little bit of info about execution because I didn't want to overwhelm everybody. And when we were creating the videos, Vince is like, man, you got to talk to the most simple, basic demographic because you just don't know. Like you got to, you have to dumb it down so much that anybody who's never heard of your stuff understands it. And, uh, so my 40 X was kind of the sequel and my 40 X was like, okay, well, you know, not only am I going to teach beginners, but now I'm going to teach you just a whole different level. So it's almost like an advanced version of the my 40 X of the my 40 program, but I also still teach basics concepts. So my 40 X is, is a complete program in itself because I teach, um, you know, there's, a, there's three separate parts of the program. There's a beginner, a graduate and a pro uh, aspect to the program. And then there's also the videos have, um, tips for for beginners, intermediate, and then people at the highest level as well. So that's really what it was, man. Is like I put something out because somebody told me it would be unique and it would do well, and it did, and it did much better than I ever expected. And and then the next level is okay. Well, I, now I have a lot more to share with you, and you realize that there's a need for it. Because I mean, like yourself, when I put it out, I was like, I don't know if people are gonna like it, man. Like I really believe most bodybuilders are people who are aspiring to build muscle just kind of want to go in there and sling weight, man. Like mm -hmm. from the guys I, I, I hang out with or I associate with on the pro stage, like there's no conscious effort to do anything. It's just go in there and work as hard as you can. And there's no intelligent thought for the most part. It's just, I'm going to go in there, squeeze something, work hard, and hopefully I get bigger. Right. So my approach is very different. And I didn't know if there was going to be a huge following. I really had no clue. And I've just been very lucky to, um, you know, have people really appreciate what I'm putting out. I, you know, I think you've hit on a huge difference uh, between the pros and the guy in the gym who wants to look like the pros. You know, we, those are the guys, you know, I, and not, not to in any way cast any doubt on the work that professional athletes do. I mean, they put in massive amounts of work. Um, the dedication is amazing, but, you know, at the end of the day, they just – they have an advantage over those who are not professionals and who will never get there. Um, and sure. so, you know, those people have to figure out – like, and that's me. You know, at, at one point I wanted to be a, a, a pro bodybuilder. Well, at one time I also wanted to be a pro cyclist. You know, I tried all these different things and I got really good and I got really big and sometimes I got really strong. But, you know, I, I kind of realized no matter how much work I put in – uh, I, I wouldn't hit those levels, unfortunately. So what I then learned to do is, okay, what's the smartest work I can do to get to my peak level? Um, and I think that's what you're touching on here. You know, you're you're giving this to to people who, you know, they want to be at that pro level and they just – they may not have the genetics, so you help them to just optimize to hit their best. And then when they get to their best, they may find out at that point, hey, I do have the genetics to to be a pro bodybuilder, or I, you know, I do have, you know, whatever it takes. Uh, and, and I think you've really hit on that. Like the people, the people who are striving to be the pros are the ones who just need so much guidance and they're willing to do what it takes. To find out. I mean, just to find out. Uh, I know that was me. I was, killed myself doing so many different things. You know, there was when I wanted to be a, a pro cyclist, you know, I was on that bike for two to 300 miles a week, you know, just playing with different ways. And then what I found made me better was way, way less volume than that. And, 
Same thing with bodybuilding. I used to spend hours and hours in the gym, and then I realized I didn't need to spend two or three hours in the gym every day. You know, I could get it done with an hour and a half. You just needed to do it well. Yes, you know, exactly. You know, most of the time. Exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like my, my, my uh, intent is never to speak to people who aspire to be pro bodybuilders. I mean, sure, that's going to happen because people want to aspire to be where I am, but – my intent is to speak to literally anybody who's looking to make the most of their time in the gym. Like the human body is the human body and it's intended to move in a certain way and mechanics are mechanics and the body's supposed to move this particular way, whether it be like ironically, one of the biggest demographics that's starting to pick up for me is women and because they realize like, hey, it's not, it doesn't have to be about slinging heavy weights. It needs to be about placing tension where you want tension to go and knowing that you're in conscious control of that at all times. And most people have no idea that Hey, I can actually make a bench press work my back if I show you how to do it. And like, what? No, no, bench press is for your chest. No, bench press is for whatever the hell you want it to work because we're, depending where you're placing your focus, depending where you're placing your intent, and I show you guys how to do that stuff in the videos, how to just manipulate tension uh, and allow it to work whatever you want. So if there's a weak body part that's not getting enough uh, growth, the reason is your body's dispersing tension where it wants it to go, not where you want it to go. So someone at any level can benefit from this information. It's a matter of like, hey, I want to make the most of my time. I want to be efficient with the amount of time I have in the gym. I mean, I've got a family now. So every time I go to the gym, it's got to be efficient. It's got to be effective. You know, I can't be spending two and three hours a day in there and just, you know, haphazardly throwing darts at a dartboard trying to you know, hope I hit something. It's got to be strategic. It's got to be specific and get the hell out of there. I find my like one of my my biggest following now is in like doctors and therapists and dentists and people who, you know, are professionals and actually, mm -hmm. you know, need to make the most of their time and appreciate an intelligent approach. Um, so, I mean, it's, as much as it's for people who want to get as huge as possible, it's also for people who just want to, you know, learn to bring up weak body parts or learn to make the most of their workouts or have a somewhat um, logical and intelligent approach when they walk in the gym, as opposed to going in there every day and you know, not really having a plan or doing the same workouts every day or, you know, understanding that there there is methodology in exercise. It's not just going in there and hoping you get the job done. There's, you know, there's a certain way exercises are supposed to be executed. There's a certain order they're supposed to be done in if, as far as op being optimal goes or, or mm -hmm. you know, there's a certain um, number of appropriate ranges you should be going through. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of considerations, man. So that's all that stuff is included in the programs. And that's why, you know, there's kind of something in there for everyone. You, you make that palatable. You don't just, you don't just say, oh, you got to take all this under consideration every workout. You're like, well, you know, here, here's the construct. Let me just walk right. you through the construct. And then here's the explanation as to why, if you're that interested, but you know, here's the usable tool. Right. Yeah. I try to keep it simple, man. And one thing I do in my videos that makes it actually kind of cool is most of the people, about 95% of the people that I take through on my program videos I've never actually worked with before. I've never trained them in the gym. I've never done, put them through a workout. So they're completely raw. So I'm literally correcting them on the spot. So I'm showing them optimal execution on the spot. And I think that's really valuable for people because obviously I've never worked with most of the people who buy my programs and, and they get to see me, you know, correct someone who's a raw quote unquote beginner. They may not be beginners, they may be advanced, but they're a beginner to the stuff that we teach. And it, it makes it, um, I think easier to absorb because, you know, hey, I've never seen, you know, this exercise before and neither has this person. So they're probably going to be making the same mistakes you are. And, uh, you know, trying to make it, uh, like I say, palatable for the most uh, entry level person. That's probably powerful for you as well during the teaching, just because I know they, you know, I found all kinds of questions came up that I could have never anticipated when I put my material out. So, you know, the last three years, it's funny, car backloading also came out in 2011. Uh, so in those last three years, I've learned so much just from the questions people ask. So I can see, you know, why why the videos have so much value uh, because you're, you're getting that in the moment. Uh, you know, you're getting yeah. questions that you're not going to think of that you, you probably didn't anticipate until working with somebody. Uh, so that's, I mean, that you've, you've got, you've got a, a really well th thought out program, which is, you know, amazing, but even more unique in this industry, you have a really well thought out product, uh, which just does not happen that often. Most people just slap together something, throw it in a, you know, PDF 
template. Maybe they shoot some crappy videos and, you know, that's, that's it. They're done and they're just looking to cash in. And I, that's definitely not the case here. You know, you are, you're building a great program and, you know, just curious, are you looking at, you know, I, I could see, and you might be doing this. Uh, and if, if you don't want to comment, say no comment, but are you building a, uh, like certification kind of model around this where, you know, people can actually come in and get certified on not, not just the, you know, training assembly, you know, that kind of stuff, but actually like being certified as an expert in kind of the movement patterns and things like that. Yeah. You know, ironically, man, this, uh, I'm, I'm building that it's going to be launching into the end of 2015. And the reason I decided to do that is not, it was not something I had ever started, you know, it had never been in the, in the front of my mind when I started, but I get people, I mean, like yourself, I get people who call me or email me on a daily basis and want to bring me to wherever they are in the world and put on camps and seminars and, um, and, you know, ultimately there needs to be a format for that, but mm -hmm. it's also people saying, well, I, I want to learn how to do this and I want to be certified and be able to teach people. I want to teach people this information because I see it being so valuable. I want to show my trainers. I want to show my, my, um, my clients. Um, so there's a need and ultimately it's just, you know, filling a need. Um, it's, like I say, it's not something I've ever uh, wanted to do. I never even thought about it, but, uh, it's almost become a necessity now because there's, you know, people around the world who say, Hey man, like how do I teach this to people? How do I learn this more intricately? And just putting it into a consumable format that's kind of logical and, um, you know, sequential allows people to learn it and apply it to their clients and their trainers and whomever. So yeah, I'm, should be by the end of 2015. If not, it'll be early 2016. I'm trying not to take too much on my plate, man, because I'm, you know, trying to be a professional bodybuilder, a parent of three and a businessman run a business. It's a lot. <laughs> It's a lot. So um, I, I try not to water everything down, but uh, yeah, it's, it's in the process, man. We're laying the outline now and uh, the demand is certainly there. I just don't want to ever put out something that's not um, at the highest possible level. Like if it, if it takes another two or three years, it takes another two or three years. It just needs to, to um, you know, I just don't want to water myself down, I guess. Right. Totally understand, understandable. And actually I very much respect that, especially man, your life, I have trouble with one dog, let alone <laughs> you know, kids, wife, yeah, you know, and I, I, yeah, I, that, that's intense. So, you know, even, even more just the, the time you take with all this, uh, even just getting on a podcast, I, you know, I really appreciate it. I'm sure your audience and your fans do as well. I appreciate getting on the phone with you, man. It's, uh, it's definitely an honor. The, so let's. I'm I'm trying to think. I've I've got a bunch of stuff on my mind. I'm trying to think what what would be the most useful for my audience. I always try to you know extract the most useful information from my guests when I get them on. But you've got actually uh, you you've got some stuff that's just really close to my heart, and you know maybe because I I didn't make it down that road, but you know I kind of want to ask like what. You know, what was it like? Was there a moment when you realized, uh, yeah, you were going to be one of the top pro bodybuilders in the world? I mean, just like I never had that moment. So I kind of want to live vicariously through you and just, you know, did you ever have that moment or did you just keep doing incredibly well at the shows where all of a sudden, you know, you're you're one of the top guys in the world? Man, I don't know if I ever had that moment. I mean, I'll give you my brief contest history. I mean, I, as much as I'm quote unquote, one of the top guys in the world, I really haven't competed that much. Um, <laughs> 2000, it's true. 2005, I started competing. I got my pro card in 2008, uh, 2009. I did very well as my first pro show. I got third, uh, in 2010, I almost quit because I got, I was so focused and, uh, it's going to be getting, I was prepping for the New York pro yeah. and, um, so focused, man, two workouts a day. All I did was eat, sleep and train. I had no kids, no family, no business. Uh, I just was the, you know, I was the bodybuilder constantly yeah. 24 hours a day. And I ended up putting on 20, uh, sorry, 17 pounds of stage weight in eight months prepping for the New York pro. Wow. I went to the New York pro extremely confident. I was in great shape and ended up finishing seventh and it broke me, man. And because everybody, when you're growing up, tells you how political the IFBB is. I was like, well, F these guys, man. 
I'm not playing your politics. I believe I deserve to finish better. And I didn't. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm not going to deal with this. I don't want to be somebody's puppet. Um, and then I, you know, took a step back and let my, my temper kind of settle down a little bit mm-hmm. and I took a look at the pictures. And I, I mean, I may not have deserved seventh. I may have deserved fourth or fifth, but what, regardless, I didn't look the way I wanted to look. And what had happened was I had trained so hard and so, um, I was so committed that my strengths became glaring strengths and my weaknesses became glaring weaknesses. So mm-hmm. bodybuilding is obviously about balance and you know, I, I looked at the pictures and I was like, man, I, I look like shit. I deserve to get seventh or whatever I got. And um, that's kind of what started my quest to uh, learn or at least apply more about mechanics and realize that you can't just go in the gym and go for gusto every day and work as hard as possible because you'll never get to where you want to go. Um, and since then, it's just been constantly getting better and better and better. And it was certainly a shot to my ego because I really did believe I could be great. You know, when I started bodybuilding, I just started competing because I want to get in shape. I got fat in university because you know, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. And within six months, I went to compete. And I, you know, I, I thought I could be a good bodybuilder, but I never aspired to be pro. And I just won every show I entered, basically. Uh, and then again, I almost quit in 2010. And since then, that was kind of like my catalyst. That was the thing that, um, you know, really made me commit all of my time to learning how to improve exercise, execution, movement. Um, you know, understand exercise. And, uh, you know, I don't know that there's ever been a realization. I still don't know that I realize I'm one of the best guys in the world or, you know, quote unquote, one of the best guys in the world. Hopefully one day I'll get there. And, uh, you know, my goal, my goal is to win the Arnold. And, uh, you know, that may be, you know, the, the deciding factor for me realizing that, Hey, you're actually, you know, you're one of the best guys in the world until then. It's just, a, it's a continuous quest to be better, to learn, and every time I step in the gym, I'm trying to be better and both physically and mentally, right? You know, learn mm-hmm. how to be a little bit, work a little bit harder today and also learn how to be a little more effective with your, with your movements and your execution today. So yeah, man, unfortunately to answer your question, there really isn't an answer, but, uh, you know, hopefully one day I'll realize that, you know, I'm, I'm one of the best, I'd like to be one of the best guys ever and be remembered as someone who changed the sport, changed the mindset of the sport, um, and also was able to walk the walk and, you know, take what I believe is, you know, somewhat mediocre genetics. Uh, if you see the people in my family, you'd see what I mean and, uh, and take it to you know, someone who deserves to be at the top of the sport. That's awesome. Well, if you ever have that epiphany, like send me an email or something. Cause I want to know what that's <laughs> <right>. like. <laughs> like, hey, John, I realize I'm, I realize I'm good now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. That's, that's all I want. I just want a little email that says, Hey, I figured it out. I know I'm good. You know. Yeah, I know I'm all, no, man. You know, I know I'm good. I know I'm, <laughs> I'm great at what I do. But and some of these guys I'm competing against are just they're the consummate bodybuilders, right? That's all they do is eat, sleep, and train. And I've got so many things pulling my attention and my focus that I just never feel like I'm a bodybuilder. I feel like I'm a guy who works out and competes, but I don't feel like you know all I do is eat, sleep, and train bodybuilding. So you know, people ask me, "Am I a bodybuilder?" Yeah, I'm a bodybuilder, but you know, there's a lot more to me than just being a bodybuilder. So. I don't know right. that I'll ever have the realization. Yeah, that's not your life. You you've learned and and part of that is you know you've learned to work smarter instead of harder, which is what we all get to benefit from in this in this scenario. <laughs> sure. And there needs to be a balance, man. There's no doubt. Like you got to work hard if you want to make tremendous progress and, and make the gains you're looking for. But uh, why not do it in an intelligent way that gets you there twice as fast with half the injuries? Yeah, that that's a huge thing. Is injuries? I mean. And we're seeing that flourish now, unfortunately, with certain training styles. I mean, do you, I, I don't even know, have you ever had uh, an injury yourself, you know, in in your career? Um, and like any bodybuilder, there's bumps and bruises from the mm-hmm. dumb stuff I did when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, I've never had an injury in bodybuilding. I blew up my knee when I was 18. I was, um, I just received a offer for a baseball scholarship and- Ugh. Literally the last game before I was intended to go, I blew up my knee. So that kind of started off my bodybuilding career. Wow. Um, but yeah, no, no, no major injuries um, other than just wear and tear from, you know, being an idiot when I was a kid and believing that I had to squat 800 pounds to build big legs. Right. You know, it worked, but there was also <laughs> somewhat, um, you know, significant side effects. So, but yeah, I mean, I feel pretty good, man. I just need some time off, make sure I get regular therapy and, um, my body feels better than ever now, and hopefully because of you know having a 
pretty good understanding of what I'm supposed to be doing. I can actually keep it this way and have a nice long career. I think the therapy aspect of it is completely ignored, especially when you're younger. When I was, you know, when I was younger, I would have never, if, if I was thinking massage, I was not thinking the type of massage, you know, sports massage <laughs> to keep sure. my, yeah, keep my muscles in tune. Yeah. I never chiropractor. I was like, uh, chiropractors are stupid you know, muscle activation, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. You know, when I was younger, I was like, Shh, you know, that's why would I waste my time? Why would I waste my money? And now that I'm older, I mean, I, I depend on those things. I, I, I finally get it. I understand, you know, if, if you're going to perform or put your body through that kind of workload and abuse, you, you really need to take care of it. And that's more than just what you put in your mouth. Uh, it, it really depends on, you know, getting that kind of extra mechanic work is, you know, what I call it. You know, you, you just got to keep things tuned up. Uh, so do you, yeah. is that, that's, I, I assume, just part of your regimen these days? I mean, you know what? Um, it always has been. Um, I guess since I started as a pro bodybuilder in, let's say, 2008, um, mm -hmm. it's been a weekly thing for me until I moved to Tampa and I have a massive, I have a massive hard time finding a decent therapist in Tampa. <laughs> Uh, so I actually have to travel to get therapy, which is kind of ridiculous. But I fly to Denver about once a month. I fly to Toronto about once a month to work with my therapist because I have no choice. Uh, but at this point in my life, yeah, man, it's a massive, massive part. Um, it's, it's not as often as I'd like it to be because it's not local. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, just like nutrition, man, chemical um, intake, like what you put in your mouth is massive. And then secondary to that, you got to make sure you're getting your um, your regular maintenance and are these the kind of things you address? Because in uh, you, you said MI forty X, especially you kind of help people. You, know, you help people with their sleep, what they're thinking about when they're training. Uh, is that also something you kind of go into to to work with those things? I know I found my sleep significantly improved when I started getting regular chiropractic work. Um, Interesting. I, yeah, yeah. I, I noticed that. You know, I was apparently holding a lot of stress in my neck. Uh, some muscular imbalances were, you know, making that happen and just getting those weekly or biweekly releases, like my sleep got a lot better. So, mm. you know, I, I'm just. That, that isn't something I, I don't particularly address the, the manual modalities in my programs just mm -hmm. because um, the standard is so variable. It's impossible. Like if I tell someone, hey, you need to go get MAT or, you know, get, go you can do it chiropractic or, you know, you need to get ART. Unless I'm giving you a specific referral to a specific person, I have no idea what their standard of care is. And nice. unfortunately, like there's such a big gap in, you know, some people are amazing at MAT and ART and chiropractic, and some people are so terrible they shouldn't be allowed to leave their house. Right. So I don't, I don't morally make um, recommendations, man, just because, I mean, I get to work with great people because I travel the world and I identify them and, you know, I'm, luckily now able to afford them. But uh, for the average people, I, I say, Hey, this is what I do, but I don't ever say, Hey, go out and do that because I just don't know the standard of care, man. And unfortunately, like I'll, I'll, I'll tell people what I do and if they want to go ahead and follow suit, then that's great. But as far as, uh, like I said, making recommendations, it's hard because I've, I've been to people who are literally terrible and shouldn't be practicing. And then I've been to people who change your life. So it's yeah. hard. Yeah. That's, uh, absolutely agree with that. A chiropractor, I think I went through six or seven people in the Bay Area before I found somebody who was exceptional. Um, and then once I left here, I, I left the Bay for a couple years. Man, I couldn't find really anybody in Austin that I felt comfortable with. Uh, and then right. Phoenix, it took me, took me four months before I found somebody in Phoenix who was giving me the standard of care that I expected. Uh, so yeah. I, I mean, I've been here four years and I found one guy who flies in one day a month, <clears throat> Atlanta. That's all wow. I get, man. He flies in one day a month. Actually, ironically, today's the day I get to see him, which is pretty awesome. I look forward to this day. Oh, nice. Um, but uh, yeah, it's so difficult. So I fly, like I said, I fly to Denver um, about once a month to see Greg Roscoff, who's the MAT, the creator of MAT. And he's just, mm -hmm. uh, he's unbelievable and ridiculous. And sometimes I fly to Toronto to see another MAT guy or I have an ART guy there and an osteopath. And um, you know, I, yeah, I, just, I have to travel to get it done. Otherwise, it just doesn't get done. So we're, we're kind of on the topic of, uh, you know, this therapy and MAT. The first time I was exposed to MAT, I was just, 
I was amazed because you can see instantly, you know, if you're with somebody who's really good uh, at MAT, you can see instantly how things were deactivated um, and what happens when they start firing properly. Uh, and, and of course that, you know, that I had started to around that time before that. And after that, I'd started looking at, um, uh, what are they called? The motor, the activation patterns. Okay. Man, yep. man I'm drawing a blank now. Uh, and, and it turned out there were, go ahead. I know what you mean. I, yeah. And, and there were, and I found some interesting exercises in the literature that, um, they found actually forced some of those patterns to fire completely. So for example, some people, especially people who have issues winging with their shoulder blade, and that's where the shoulder blade, uh, comes way far out from the back, uh, and you lose yeah. a little bit of stability there. Uh, there was a thing called, they called them shoulder dumps, uh, was, the <laughs> was the exercise in the literature and I looked it up and I looked at various ways to produce it and I was reading the the muscle the motor motor pattern that it fired off and I started messing with those and it it actually was amazing I could feel even though I don't have a problem winging I could feel a tension and a stability in my shoulder blades after warming up with those and after you know using those for a couple months like I found they weren't doing anything anymore so I had reestablish those patterns or so I thought there, there's unfortunately not a, a lot of research in that direction and I was just wondering do you in your program did you construct around those kind of things because you were talking about bench and that's a perfect example uh, you know when I tell somebody to be focusing on their back when they're benching or on their glutes making sure their foundation is tight all that and they're like you know this is bench what are you talking about I just I just need to push the weight I'm like no you know, your whole body needs to be behind that movement, which means your back needs to be stable. Your glutes need to be stable. Your feet need to be firmly planted. We know all this, but some people like literally have such a difficult time, say, pinching their shoulder blades together to build a good foundation when they do bench heavy. Uh, do right. you, how do you, what are your cues for that basically is what I'm, I'm trying to get at. If you don't mind sharing those, if you don't want to totally get it. Oh man, I, I, it's very similar to what you're saying. Is I'm teaching people to kind of the, the term I use is lock it down. You're locking down the chain so that there's no extraneous movement, and that I think is one of the most important things in hypertrophy training. Is um, you know making sure that the muscle you're trying to work is actually moving. As far as corrective exercise, I tried not to get into. I'm, I'm by no means am I a corrective exercise specialist, so I didn't want to get into you know teaching people how to. You know, fix their winged scapula or, you know, fix their lack of internal rotation at their hip or whatever it may be. I didn't want to get into that stuff. So I just kept it really simple as far as, um, you know, teaching them to immobilize certain parts of their body by contracting certain muscles and then optimizing movement patterns. Um, but to be honest, with the intent of one of my next ventures is going to be corrective exercise. I've got a friend who's absolutely brilliant when it comes to, um, you know, figuring out how to correct um, movement and balances. Now, the issue with that stuff is, is there's so many options and so many way, places it could be coming from mm -hmm. um, that it's it's probably a 12-month endeavor to really lock down any type of semblance of a program or, you know, um, anything that's valuable for people. But, yeah, I didn't dive into corrective exercise at all. Um, just teaching people how to eliminate extraneous movement, eliminate the most common errors, like you say, if, if you know not pinning your shoulder blades back or pushing through your back or you know manipulating where what your hands are doing as far as in out, um, you know make sure your spine is stabilized and there's no extraneous movement there. I'm um, also definitely key teaching points on making bench press, but uh, never any attempt correct that. I just don't want to go there yet, man. I mean, so uh, there, someone says, "Hey, I got an injury. I can't do this." Well, I'm not, I can't fix you from afar. You know, I can't even attempt to make a suggestion unless I know it's gone in with the other things in your body. So uh, I didn't attempt to, to dive into that stuff. I find that um, usually if you just, and this is great in the program, if people understand how the movement is to be performed, you know, a lot of times some of those things, and, and this is why I hate all those stability exercises and being on BOSU balls and all that kind of crap, that actually makes you worse. 
Um, it yeah, deregulates sure. your nervous system. And, you know, people don't understand if they just understood how to do the movements, they usually get so much compensatory stability that it just yep. – it translates across the whole thing, you know, across your, your whole body, your balance. Uh, and, and people miss that so much. So. Yeah. As far as, as far as balance, like you said, compensatory balance, one of the, the simplest things that MAT taught me is the reason that things become inflexible or lack mobility is because the brain senses weakness. The brain says, Hey, this area is not stable. We should, so we're going to, we're going to tighten it up. So like people have tight hamstrings and they go, I'm just, you know, I lack flexibility. No, you don't lack flexibility. You lack, you lack strength. You lack integrity in that area. So, you know, throwing someone on a BOCE ball or shoving them into some stretch is not the solution to improve range of motion at a particular joint. It's giving the brain the cue that it's, it's strong. It has integrity in that area. And that's something that I apply to my training is Getting strong at the extremes of the range is one of the best ways to improve mobility, but it's also one of the best ways to improve motor uh, motor firing. So, um, motor recruitment. Yeah. Um, you know, taking it uh, through its full active range of motion, taking the muscle through its full active range, and that's one thing that MAT taught me is like, you know, the idea that what happens when you walk on ice? Well, your body tenses up because it senses in, it senses instability. That's right. the exact same thing that's happening with all these people who lack mobility or lack the ability to attain a certain range of motion is your body just senses instability. So it tightens up. So offer it some type of stability by showing it strength at the extremes of the range. And that's a massive component of the program is, you know, Hey, I lack flexibility here. Well, the reason is you're not strong at these particular parts of the range. So let's get you strong here in a very slow and controlled manner. And that's one thing that, you know, I do a lot in these programs is teaching people tempo. So, so simple, but it's just showing control. And if you're not in control of movement, you're never going to increase the range. You're never going to build the appropriate amount of muscle. Because your brain will never allow you, your body will never allow you to grow because it's never going to get strong at the extremes. Um, right. So, so many interesting aspects to train that, you know, we haven't even touched yet, but there's so many things that we've touched. Oh, yeah. Like the, I still geek out about the stretch shorten cycle when I started learning about how important that part of the movement is. I, I started, I was like, wow, you know, so that pretty much negates a lot of devices we see out there, like things that, might give you a um, elastic assistance as you go through that stretch shorten cycle or doing half reps at the other end of the stretch shorten cycle. I mean, I, you know, I see all this stuff. I'm like, you know, I wish, I just wish somebody would go through and look at the research so we could get, so we could have some uniform understanding of this stuff and start getting some of these stupid things out of the gym. And, and they really are. They're just stupid. They waste time. Uh, they make people frustrated. I think they discourage a lot of people who need to be in the gym uh, because they start getting worse instead of better or they or they just see nothing. Like why would you go to the gym, spend an hour every day, pay for a trainer if after a month or two months or three months, I mean, y you don't see anything and you don't really feel any better. Like why would the you continue is, to do never, that? It's never, just a, it's never just a month or two months or three months. It's often three and four and five years. I mean, how people do you see in the gym? <laughs> And they look exactly the same or worse. And, I'm, and you're like, how's your training? Like, oh, it's going great. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it doesn't look like it, but good for you, you know? I, I mean, know. you should be making some appreciable progress. I mean, either your nutrition is horrendous or you have no right. idea what you're doing in the gym. And it's probably both, but, yep. um, you know, just such simple things you can change. And, uh, you know, that's, I guess, why the programs that I put out and the ones that you put out are so successful is – you know, it's logic to us, but it's not logic to other people. So when they start applying these simple principles, they're like, oh, this shit actually works. <laughs> yeah. So Yeah, it's a framework. Yeah. You know, we provide frameworks which are way more powerful than trying to specify minutia. Um, yeah, definitely. That's why I know somebody who basically, you know, hit the scene the same time I did nutrition-wise. Um, and, you know, now we're both like four, four and five years down the road from when we, we both started – implementing our own personal programs i mean his latest talk on stage he had a, a before picture behind him and he was standing talking to the stage and you couldn't tell any difference between how he looked now and his before photo he had gone through this cycle of yeah his diet worked for a year he got in great shape and now he's overweight again um and if you you see me like i've just consistently gotten better um and it's that's because I, i've got a framework that's not not focused on the minutiae at all, and his is the complete opposite. 
it's completely minutia focused. Um, and I, and I think that's, that's absolutely true of training programs almost, you know, maybe even more so, you know, people are focused on such minor details that you see in advanced lifters, even I've seen things from powerlifting making it into the gyms where th this was my favorite. I was at a big box gym. Uh, this guy had somebody on the bench press and they only had 10 pound plates on the bar. And then he draped chains over the end of the bar that maybe weighed five pounds each. But the best part was the chains didn't even reach the ground, even at the bottom of the moment. <laughs> And he's t and the, and this trainer is telling the guy why the ch why the change ma makes such a big difference because they get lighter as you go down as you go down in the movement. I'm like, right. okay, you missed a key concept with why the weight deloads <laughs> with a chain. <laughs> they don't just magically get lighter. Um, and not only that, but the guy was probably doing the bench press with horrendous form to begin with, right? But right. His put feet these chains and hands in here. <laughs> yeah, and his his feet were up off the ground. I hate that. I hate when I see people benching with their feet like floating up in the air. It's like, hey, good idea. Make yourself instantly weaker on the bench. Yep. yep. Use less load, less, less muscle recruitment, but at least you're getting a little bit of core, quote unquote, core work. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's my favorite. Oh, man, my, I hit my core so hard today. You know, I stood yeah, on a BOSU I'm ball for 10 minutes. BOSU squatting. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, like blowing, it's like having somebody blow a wind machine at you. I'm working my core. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This stuff, uh, you know, it just, especially, you know, we're on that side of it where we see this and it, it literally is at the point of just being excruciating to go into the big box gym anymore and see some of the things that are going on. I mean, I, you know, not only does it in like just infuriate me in a, in a way, you know, it just like, I don't know what to do. I would love to tell the individual, Hey, you know, you're not really getting anything out of this or it might be making you worse. But at the same time, I don't want to just go in and be a massive asshole like I sometimes am in real life. Um, right. you know, so, so it's kind of that, that, that mixed feeling. And, you know, the, the best I can do is, you know, try to get good programs out there into the public eye as much as possible. I feel like yeah, is definitely. is the better thing to do than just be an asshole in every gym I walk into. Well, there's a lot of guys out there doing that, right? There's, a, you know, I'm I'm the guy out there trying to tell people how to do it right, and mm -hmm. there's so many people out there telling them how stupid they are and what they're doing wrong. And right. I just, I mean, I, I'm trying to to maintain my, um, you know, my approach. And you no, know, guys, hey, try this, do this well. You know, that's unfortunately that's the way I'm in a gym too, and sometimes that's a massive distraction for me because I try to help people. Right. Um, but like. Right. No, you get guys out there, I'm not going to drop names, but you know who I'm talking about, I'm sure, is people out there just telling everyone how stupid they are and, you know, yeah. how they, they don't know what they're doing and, and never really telling them what to do right. But uh, it's unfortunate, man. I mean, it's part of the way the world works, I guess. There's always going to be someone focusing on the positive and there's going to be someone focusing on the negative. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the guy trying to tell people, hey, let's try this. Let's make this better. And uh, hopefully it's, it's working. Yeah. No, a fantastic program, and we're we're actually at the end of our hour, unfortunately. Uh, anything you want to wrap up? Like, let everybody know where you can find you, where they can get MI40X. Yeah, it's just uh, www.mi40x.com. Uh, my website is benpakulski.com, P-A-K-U-L-S-K-I. Um, I mean, I'm, like I say, the, if, if anything, check out the videos. You know, if you don't want someone to write your workouts for you because you like to go in there and wing it, um, you know, if you're training chest today, go out and check out some of the videos because it will make a difference. I guarantee it. And uh, it will make a big difference and it'll accelerate your results dramatically. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. I hope you change your physique and you love it and, and you help other people pass it on. Yeah, I, fantastic program. I mean, things that I've literally been digging through for a decade, you know, works of different authors. Dr. Michael Yeses, I love some of his stuff. I mean, I felt like yours was kind of one of the first things I've seen, especially in the video series, that kind of put all that together where, you know, I don't – when somebody asks me now, like, well, where did you learn about this and this and this – I can say, well, these are the different places I, I was initially introduced to all these things, but you can learn about all of it. Just go watch these videos. It'll save you a ton of time. Thanks, man. That's, that's really nice. Appreciate it. 
Yeah, that's, that was the first thing I was realizing when I was watching them. I'm like, this is a massive accumulation of information, you know, that, you know, personally took me 10 years of watching and reading and seeing all kinds of other people's work. Uh, and you did a really incredible job of encapsulating it all in your product. So uh, kudos on that. That was Im impressively well done product. Thanks, man. I mean, we're blessed to be able to travel the world and meet smart people, you know, as you are. And, and I'm, I'm extremely blessed to surround myself with great people. And we're constantly trying to push the level of knowledge and, uh, and le the level of training up and hopefully just keep spilling knowledge on people for a long time to come. Yep. That's, uh, that's, you know, the guest always gives just the most awesome quote to end the show on every time. Uh, and I think that was it. So Ben Pakulski, everybody, uh, mi40x.com. Check out his program and benpakulski.com. We'll have those links down in the show notes. And that is another episode of Body IO FM. Thanks again, Ben. Thanks, Kiefer. You've been listening to Body IO FM with your host. Kiefer and Dr. Rocky. If you'd like to hear more, log on to body.io. We'll be back next time with more science from the pinnacle of human health and performance.